say hello to Traveler-san. Through the creative use of game mechanics, and at times glitches, we're on a quest to see just how much of Genshin Impact can be completed using only the Traveler. And we sometimes break things. If you enjoyed the series, do make sure to like and subscribe. It helps Traveler-san out a lot. The Aranyaka Quest In the previous episode, Traveler-san made a lot of progress and achieved some notable feats, like murdering Rana, scamming Jazari, solving a whole bunch of Dendro Ring puzzles, bypassing one of the water drains, the Cooking Quartet, the Three Paths, and even Vimana Agama have all been cleared. This is the final stretch. Whoa, a little space please. Why does she take up 70% of the screen? We're beginning with Agnihotra Sutra, or what I like to call the Kusava series, given the titular gadget used throughout. So these fellows are incredibly shady. They really ought to work on keeping their story straight if they're so intent on lying. And uh, learn to not speak so skittishly. Kusava is such an interesting gadget. What a shame that its usage is controlled by quest flags. More on that in a bit, but for now, let's talk water. The devs must enjoy water draining as a mechanic, as there's certainly no shortage of it. Can't say I'm a fan? Let's work around it, shall we? Getting out of bounds here is incredibly easy. Similar to the ceiling of the turkey's lair, there's an open spot hidden near the west exit of the cave. Once outside, can drop below the water through this triangular hole, and that's it. And not only are you below the water, you're also outside the map. I managed to climb back into the cave below the water, but very quickly it became apparent that, like Vimana Agama, the appearance of what we need is tied to the trigger of lowering the water. But what about the second cave? The one that has something Kusava must trigger, something that's built into the map as a mechanism. When attempting to enter the second cave from out of bounds, there's a giant rock sealing it. But, in what is possibly the most absurd loading zone I've ever seen, the rock unloads as one gets closer to it. Now that's weird. I think it has to do with height, since it loads back in around Traveler-san as he climbs up. That's definitely a withering zone. The effect pops up, and while the discolored terrain is present, the tumors aren't. This is what we want, to activate these mechanisms and hopefully trigger a skip of sorts. Except, that can't be done, because Kusava can't be used. But that doesn't make any sense. Kusava is definitely used in this location, and thus we harken back to when I mentioned usage of Kusava being controlled by quest flags. Yep, until the first cave is cleared, Kusava is locked for this area. We can't do anything now, but in a moment we'll break the quest if only just a little bit. Let's return to the first cave and lower the water. Did not feel like going to hunt for materials for a new portable waypoint. Just gonna carry this dendrograna to the surface and climb up from there. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, yes. I see. This mushroom. Indeed. What's the little fella talking about exactly? With the first cavern cleared, Kusava will now be usable in the second. Time to break in, trigger those mechanisms, and see what happens. <laughs> Nothing? That's what I thought at first. Let's hit this Dendro Monument up above and drain the water. Whoops, gotta repair it. No biggie. Really? Alrighty, there we go. The water drains. Let's investigate the... Nothing's there. Paimon and Aranakin. That's twice now you've spouted off about imaginary mushrooms. Beginning to think, maybe you two ate them instead. It would explain a lot. So, hitting that mechanism first activates a future plus flag, which makes it so the mushroom is already stolen. Hence why it doesn't load in. It also makes these guys instantly appear when the water is fully drained. A shame it didn't spawn them in while the water was draining, thus instantly KOing them. <laughs> That'd have been hilarious. Oh ho, think your traps can stop me just because I have no projectiles? How foolish of Lunja to forget the game's strongest projectile, the Windblessed Harpastum. 
It was here that I found yet another use for it. While we established many episodes ago that it cannot detonate explosive barrels, it can activate those elemental mines, which apparently are called Boom Blossoms. Love the name. You get off easy this time, Lunja. Only because I didn't expect my dialogue options to matter, and ended up with a path that didn't lead to combat. Sleep with one eye open? Lady, we've established that he sleeps while levitating. Uh, that's not someone you want to mess with. We're onto the Risen Moon chapter. The realm of... Cobb, is it? Hmm, something's not right here. No, no, not that. Traveler San is used to getting blasted during cutscenes. It's the water up above. Something tells me that, uh, much like the suspended water in the chasm underground mines, this water is fake. Yep, uh, that's an invisible ceiling. Can clip the camera through it. Let's go up there to make certain of this theory. Well, there's water up here, but only that bit on the ground. The area isn't flooded. Might as well solve this while here. A portable waypoint and teleporting dendrograna will do the trick. Guess I had to go get materials for one, after all. We mentioned Traveler San doesn't like draining water. You know what else he doesn't like? Maybe I wasn't meant for this. Uh, hold that thought. Traveler San doesn't like opening barriers because why do so when you can go around? It's incredibly easy to do so. Normally, this is where I show how it's done, but for this one, I'll let the curious go and poke around the area. Truthfully, there are a number of ways to literally just walk out of the map in these caverns. I know of three, and wouldn't be surprised if there were more. Careful now, easy does it. Don't want to wake the big bad machine. Well, you know how it goes, victory no matter the cost. Paimon put in some good foreshadowing upon entering this cave, about hoping the water wouldn't come crashing down. I thought that this was neat. All the times we've drained water, and for once, we fill a place up with it. I even wondered how I would get all the stuff I didn't loot yet, or if the water would affect the area behind the barrier I never disabled. Not that any of it mattered, because the water's gone when you go back. Oh, hello there, traveler son. What a peculiar glitch. I saw this happen to Alfonso on my main account. I would think it's caused by the game not unloading the model used in the cutscene, but then that just makes things all the more mysterious, because the traveler used in the cutscene had an element, yet this one does not. Anyways, lovely saying hello to you, but it's time to move on to part 3 of the quest concerning the Morty Arena. At my command, you shall rise. I've been placing Starfall Sword in a lot of these cutscenes. This one led to something new. Hmm. Now, where are you off to, Traveler San? If he were actually moving and not walking in place, I'd have let it sit here for minutes to see how far he'd go. It was time to enter and save the Morty Arena. I had to wonder, could I complete this part without using Kusava? The three Withering Zones are set up so that the player is meant to reactivate the Dendrograna and then use them to clear the Withering, but these areas aren't that far apart from each other. Well, I give it a shot. And surprise surprise, you can actually clear it without reactivating all the Dendrograna, or destroying all the blocks that require Kusava. And this is permanent, 
Once the quest is finished and Kusava is taken away, these puzzle remnants will remain forever unsolved. I did activate the one, so if there's anything in this area requiring Dendrograna, I should be set. Could always teleport them in via portable waypoint too. With Agnihotra Sutra complete, uh, that leaves only Varunagatha. Of the three parts involving helping the Aranara, the one with Arabalika had the most stuff to test. First, we have another NPC helper, and the little guy is the strongest one yet. I was curious to see if he could attack enemies outside the scripted encounters, so went to unseal a nearby flying ruin drake. Really, that doesn't make it burn. Making me switch to Animo. Ah well, guess I'd have to anyways for the one way up here on the tree. Our Abelika can most definitely attack enemies outside the scripted encounters. And not only that, the things get downright massacred. I would love to toss our Abelika into the ring with some bosses, but there's just no way to get the little fellow outside of these areas. Next on the list, once again attempting to bypass draining the water. And once again, no can do. What a drag that they're starting to tie progression to these mechanisms. I much prefer the simpler, reach this location to continue. Truly, this little guy is too strong. Don't even have to lift a finger, but I will so that I can shoot Harpastums at them. The boss of Varunagatha is this regular fungus creature. A bit of a downgrade from the Abyss Lector earlier, but then this enemy has a unique ability to run away just like Lunja, lying traps in wait for me. I see what you're after here, thinking you can zap me to death, hey? I'm onto your ways, a uh, disturbed fungus bad bug plaguing the Varuna contraption. Uh, with my platforms and minesweeper device, I've not a thing to worry about. Well, what? After that little bit of damage? All right, no time to be surprised gotta be quick on the reaction time here, because things are dicey. One perfectly timed burst? Oh, uh, so much for burst invincibility. Is it the electrocharge status that's hitting through it? Kinda neat, to be honest. Used to using bursts to evade. A nice that something can shut down that player strategy. Probably doesn't work against the cinematic bursts. The boss fight is kinda cool. We need more battles with lots of environmental hazards. Hmm, you know, not this time. You get to come to me. Don't need to do a darn thing. Get him, Arabalika. <sighs> oh, take two. I have faith in Arabalika, so much so that I won't even move. <laughs> we, Paimon? Well, that's the last of the many quest chains that make up part two of Aranyaka. Which means, party time! Look at him. All smiles. All creepy, blank-eyed smiles. Expression swap is great. Definitely gonna try it out on more cutscenes in the future. Thus, we've reached the final chapter. <laughs> did you forget this place is still underwater? Sure, not draining it is cool, and just because is more than reason enough. But here's the real reason I didn't drain it. <laughs> That's right, Arama. Just keep floating in that direction. Just a few more steps, and then you'll vanish from... Uh, that's lame. Anyways, with Arama here and constantly healing traveler san it doesn't matter much which enemies show up on the path. Unless the enemy is an invincible withering zone. No branches to destroy, huh? I wonder. 
are they truly not here? Or are they just hidden out of reach below the sand? Yeah, I went down there. Didn't see anything as I climbed up, but I did nab this treasure chest. Was a close call. Oh, wait, is that? Quick, change the camera. It's too violent to show. Wow, that actually hurt me. Had I been lower health, we'd see Traveler Sun dying right before Rama and Paimon. And I'd again have to say that one line. Well, that's cleared. Which brings us to the last of the puzzles, lifting the seals in the sand room. It'll require Animo, a Pyrosource from afar, and surprisingly, only one portable waypoint because the devs kindly put a teleport waypoint in the room. And finally, after all that work, all that questing, we have Marana's Avatar, the most overwhelmingly difficult and sadistically designed boss in Genshin Impact. Let's just snap a few photos. Oh, nice angle. How about over here? Smile, Marana. This is your big moment. Okay, but for real, this boss is a joke and I cannot express enough my disappointment in it. It's not even a boss. It's a punching bag whose health is locked behind three withering zones. I really tried my best to make this battle more interesting, especially since traveler only doesn't mean much here as the game forces everyone to only use the traveler. I thought, oh, let's ignore Arama, which means I'd had to find another way to deal with the withering effect. Logging out and back in? I've explored in here on another account without having done the quest and found this method to work but doing so now cancels the battle. Purposely drowning is another way to deal with the withering. This method fully resets the bar, but drowning here also cancels the battle, which is kind of ridiculous given one might accidentally mismanage their stamina and cause the battle to reset. Wandering outside the area affected by the withering ends the battle, which makes three strikes. So, avoiding instant death by the withering? Not possible here, but I wasn't out of ideas yet. If I couldn't avoid it, then I'd just have to outrun it. Would it be possible to cheat the boss by entering here before the battle, clearing the withering zones, and then starting the battle? Portable waypoints came in clutch for setting this up. Kinda weird that the dialogue plays out, despite the battle having not been started, but dialogue playing when it shouldn't isn't anything new for these kind of world quests where certain triggers aren't always reliant on previous objectives having been completed. Perhaps you've noticed this guy is level 80, and perhaps you've also noticed that the health he's losing is not comparable to the damage being taken. That's because this guy's level is a lie. The game sets their level to 80, but fixes their stats to low values regardless of your world level. This is because your traveler is set to level 82 during the battle. I mean, just look at the damage. 
A level 80 Ruin Guard should have around 130,000 health. Traveler San defeats it after dealing just 12,525 damage. Anyways, that's that, and... Nope. Another failed plan. Can't interact with the tumor. Though, I suppose it wouldn't have mattered, since the branches and all will respawn the moment I leave this area. In fact, the warning message that combat will reset shows up down here even if the quest hasn't been started, as seen while out of bounds on another account. So much for speedrunning the boss, I guess I'll just have to fight it the normal way. <sighs> nah, let's do it out of order. I gotta test every possibility, right? Yeah. Well dang, it didn't take long for something to break, now did it? The Dendrograna deactivated. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> Nothing happened. I thought, perhaps I can backtrack now, complete the first one, and things will go back on track. But the boss completely softlocks. I can't decide if the devs have really thought of everything for this battle, or if this is just the perfect storm of design choices and mashing together to somehow make the fight work as intended. Whatever the case, that's a wrap. I truly have to do this the normal way. But at the very least, I can make it flashy. If you were wondering, this thing does not recover until you deal enough damage. Had it sitting here for minutes, but the show must go on. After I run a few laps around it. And again, and again, and again, and again. And what do you mean, return to where the avatar is? I'm literally attacking it right now. You call this an ultimate attack? <laughs> I can't help but smile and laugh at how pitiful this is. Oh, uh, wow, actually, that really hurts, doesn't it? Hold on, this isn't high enough. Get dunked on!
Good riddance, you weird not boss boss. What a quest. Of everything done on this series thus far, Aranyaka takes the medal for most challenging gameplay that's intended. Most of the time, we add things to the mix. Domains without elements, no healing boss rush, breaking into Inazuma, things of that nature. But Aranyaka was something I could fully tackle as it was designed, and it still presented a challenge. Mostly Dendro Rings, actually exclusively Dendro Rings, I'm happy to have found a solution that let me complete the journey. Ah yes, the journey. It of course doesn't stop here. But where to go? We're already 16 episodes in, and I still haven't completed the second Archon quest. Yeah, that's gonna have to change, huh? With that in mind, Traveler-san's next destination is... Surumi Island. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Aranyaka isn't over just yet. We've an old friend to pay a visit to. Hello, Rana. Did you think that barrier could protect you forever? You must be stiff after being cooped up like that for so long. It'll be good to stretch. And I know just the thing. So, how about it? Why don't we go for a swim? Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Travelers On. Likes, subscribes, and shares are greatly appreciated if you're enjoying the show. And if you're curious to see sneak peeks or strange finds before they're put into video format, feel free to follow me on Twitter, at Musashiden. This is Musashi and Travelers On, signing off. Till next time!